Hi, I'm Braden Skinner. And I'm Nikos Klonakis. Welcome back to TNN. This is week three of TNN. We're going to kick off week three with a new segment we call Tenacious Titans. To, to, to Tena what? Tenacious. Tenacious Titans. Hi, I'm Tanya, and in this week's Tenacious Titans, we have two tenacious students. Selma County Community Theater has become the heart of the cultural community in Shelbyville. For the first time in their history, they have chosen two students to be part of their board of directors. Those students are Mason Ward and Jake Wofford. Okay, so how does it feel to be the first students to be in the board of directors? Uh, it, it's a great honor uh, that the theater chose us to do it, uh, just kind of be like a guinea pig almost for the uh, whole process. They've never really done it before and I'm grateful for them for giving us the opportunity to try it out. Do you want to add I feel the same way. It's a great honor that they chose us to um, be the guinea pigs at Mason State. Okay. And like, when did you guys start getting involved with the community theater? Like. It has to be like a long time. Well, I started when I was eight years old. I did my first show there, and then I've done a lot of shows there since. And then recently they asked us to participate on the board of directors. I was going to say, uh, when I was ten, I, I started running sound and lights and that type of thing for the shows. And then I've just done it ever since uh, at the community theater and then here at Collins as well. Okay, and do you think like that has, like working with the community theater has helped you being more involved in the arts department here in school? Yeah, and absolutely. So. It's uh, helping at the community theater is what kind of made me want to uh, go into this more here at Collins. Me too. My first play was at the, the community theater and it kind of got my feet wet in the whole acting and theater thing and, and I love it now. It's my thing that I do. <laughs> Okay, so what kind of things will you guys be doing with, like, in the community theater? Well, we have our own little project we're going to do is try to get the youth involved in the community and the community theater. Um, we are kind of planning maybe a little Halloween party or something, and um, we're getting things done. We're going to try to help and try to, we're trying to learn. By being on the board, we're learning about what a board member does and what they look like and how those board meetings run. So in the future, we can maybe serve on different boards or come back to our hometown and serve on the SECT board. Okay, so what are you guys going to be doing this year in the school, like in the arts department? Uh, this year, uh, I'm kind of the technical director for the Prism Concert, uh, Little Mermaid, and then as well as uh, Grease, which are all performed here uh, just throughout the year. And then I'm participating in the Prism Concert. I play Sebastian in The Little Mermaid, and I play Danny Zuko in Greece. Okay, so when like are these things happening? When's the Prism Concert? Uh, Prism Con is October twenty. October twenty seventh is the Prism Concert. Uh, Little Mermaid is December eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth, and Greece is mid -April. mid April. Mid April. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We're really excited to see the work you guys get done. And yeah, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Now on to the Hallway Talk Show. How many of each animal did Jonah have on his ark? Two. Uh, three. Jonah, it was Noah. Oh, yeah, that's Two. Jonah didn't have an ark. Uh, a lot. <laughs> Jonah didn't have an ark. Noah has the ark. Who would win in the rap battle between Quentin Turner and Malik Bowen? Uh, probably Quentin Turner, not Malik. Uh, definitely Malik Bowen. I gotta go with Turner. He's a little cousin, so he's got a little bit of skills from the family. So I'm gonna go with Turner. All right, thank you so much. And then I'm gonna compare it to MCJC Young right here on the microphone. That's right, coming live from the halls of MLCHS. Quentin Turner. What are y'all doing? Well, Marissa, we're having a rap battle. Done. What? But I'm not a rapper. 
Uh, all right, check it, check it. Uh, basketball, that's my favorite sport. Uh, I like the way they dribble up and down the court. Nah, it's not Bow Wow, it's Young Q Tizzy. You ain't messing with me because you really can't see me, huh? What you want to do? What you going to do, huh? Baby, I'm sick like I got the flu. Oh, huh? Ooh, stick to you like glue. Ooh, ooh. Go ahead, All right. get that. All right. Get that. Ball, ball, ball. Ball, ball. ball. Every day. Every day. You know every sport in the school I play. I play. Yeah. yeah. Especially 2K. 2K. Hey. hey. <laughs> Swatching them threes. Hey. Now, here's another segment called How Great Thou Arts. Why are you talking like that? Hi, I'm Nyla Smith, and this week on How Great Thou Arts, we will be interviewing Mr. Brown on the upcoming theater events. This year, we are going to be doing three shows. Uh, we are doing, we're going to start off with the Prism Concert, which is a Broadway tribute. So it's going to be your choirs and your orchestra and band and the drama students, and uh, it's going to be a history of Broadway. So it'll be singing, music, dancing, you name it. In addition to the PRISM concert, we are doing The Little Mermaid, which will be in December, and Grease in April. Miss Gorman and Mrs. Howe will be our choreographers, and Mr. Powell will be our music director once again. Now, on to a new segment called College Spotlight of the Week. Ooh, college. So you need one of two things in order to get accepted to EKU. You need, you need either a 2.5 GPA or a 20 on your ACT. So EKU is known for four big academic programs. The first one is criminal justice, and then they're known for their agricultural program, and then education, and then also nursing. Yeah, so EKU is located in Richmond, Kentucky, which is a little over an hour from Shelbyville. It's 16,000 students, so it's a large, medium-sized school. So in order to apply to EKU, it costs $40. However, they are going to waive your application fee all of next week, so the week of September 20th. Yeah, so EKU has a lot of scholarships. You need um, starting off a 3.25 GPA and a 24 in your ACT. And as your ACT score goes up and your GPA goes up, that, that scholarship award amount gets larger. We send about 20, about 20 to 30 students every year. So we have a lot of Collins students who, uh, who end up going to EKU and staying for the full four years. Oh, I had great experiences at EKU. I loved EKU. Uh, from a graduate and an alumna, I have done every single thing you can do at EKU. I uh, wasn't a fraternity, I was an SAE uh, at Eastern. Uh, when I graduated, I taught one year, went back and coached for almost two years at, at Eastern with Eastern's current head football coach. So I kind of uh, had it multiple experiences at EKU. That was pretty cool. Now there's a man with fluffy hair and tiny glasses. You? No. Here's another beauty behind the madness. Take it away, Leland. Welcome to BBTM once again with Leland Cardwell. Today I have two soccer players and on my left, I have Ashley Prayer, and on my right, I have Malaya Cunningham. So, how long have you guys been playing soccer? Um, I've been playing since like third or fourth grade, and me and Malaya have actually been playing since like fifth grade together. So, you guys must have a lot of chemistry on and off the field. Uh, yes, on the field, we have a lot of chemistry. We work really well together. And off the field, we have a lot of team bonding days set up and things that we do together. And it's really fun. 
So, do you guys like? Do you have any uh, favorite soccer players that you look up to? Um, I really like Alex Morgan. I like how she plays the game. Um, I like Hope Solo. I think she's really good um, goalie, and I want to be like her someday. So, um, what positions do you guys play? I play up top, up top striker. And I play goalie. How long have you uh, been playing goalie? Um, I didn't start out playing goalie, so uh, I just started getting pretty, I guess, good recently, like within the past couple of years. And I've liked playing it, so. How long have you been playing up top striker? Um, this is actually my first year that I've played striker, like the whole season. Like past recent past years, I played um, left outside mid. So, um, do you, any of you guys have uh, like college offers or any colleges looking at you? Um, Asbury's offered me a goalie position to go play there, so I'm looking forward to um, maybe taking that. Um, I haven't really had any offers yet. Um, I don't know about them. That's all on BBTM today. Peace out. That ends week three of TNN. Thanks for watching. Make sure you tune in next week. Greetings to Blues. It is I, the Knowledgeable Pro, here with a review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Excalibur. And why I'm saying that while cringing is because I gotta be honest with you. I love the stories of King Arthur and his court. I will be blunt with you. This movie sucks. They're totally hard. I'm pretty... Okay, first of all, if you're going to make a story of Excalibur, don't add in the stupid Holy Grail that comes a lot later in the timeline. Not to mention the fact that good God the effects. It's a world of magic. A place where the whole world's supposed to seem magical. Not cheaply made. Like a monkey did it. Because literally, it's horrendous. The effects are awful. You can literally point at something and see what they made to use that effect. Which is really terrible. I'm not supposed to do that. Like, you can literally point and go, Oh look, a smoke machine. Oh look, there's something connecting to his staff that allows it to shoot fire. Literally, that's a magic there's this weird green lighting that I find horrendous. It does not work. It should not be. It looks absolutely void of all life. The green light, the fitted thing, the green light is only supposed to make things look a lot more evil. Not shine on Excalibur, making it, the holy sword look like a demonic sword. Good God Almighty! Whoever directed this should be slapped upside the head and watch, and be forced to watch this movie 500 times. And still said, and if he still says his act movie career is good, he is lying. There's a good reason why this movie was forgotten. It needs to be. It needs to stay out of the spotlight. As my, why am I bringing this up? Well, yeah, because it needs to be brought to your attention how bad it is. Oh my god, I can't even rate. This thing has actually got a negative number in my category. Negative 1,000 out of 10. It's that bad. If you ever have a copy of Excelibur, burn it. Burn it with fire. Okay, that's off my chest. There's only one good thing. They got most of the story right. Like I'm the Grip. Excalibur is one of the movies that you can look back upon and say, hmm, let's never do this again. At the very least, they should at least try to make a remake, a good remake of it. Because there's potential in King Arthur's story still. Clearly. Can, is it too much to ask for us to find a director who can actually do the job? Okay, now I'm going to go punch a wall, so this is gross signing off.